Hey there, so today we're going to be doing a comparison of the B-Link SRE5 and the Trig Key Speed S5. Now the B-Link here is running with the Ryzen 5 5600H. Now this model at this point has been replaced with the version with the 5800H. You could still find it on sale in certain websites and sometimes even listed on Amazon just depending on the seller. But in general, this specific model has been replaced. But there are still systems out there that you can find with this specific chip and for the most part they all generally perform the same as long as they can reach the same tdp now the trig key speed s5 here is running with the ryzen 5 5500u which is also one of the models of the sre5 from everything that i can see of this trig key it is pretty much identical to a b-link system they are more than likely made by the same oem and so they share a lot of the exact same configurations a lot of the exact same cooling system so in general i consider them to be almost identical so the performance difference you're going to see here is going to be comparable with the sre5 version that has the ryzen 5 5500u but let's actually take a look at the performance numbers here so starting things off we're going to be taking a look at the cpu performance we're going to be looking at cinebench r23 here now the ryzen 5 5500u ends up giving us a multi-core score of 7000 137 and a single core score of 1180. Pretty decent results, all things considered, but when we compare it to the 5600H, here we actually end up getting a multi core score of 8023 and a single core score of 1348. So in general, the extra TDP and the IPC uplift of going from Zen 2 to Zen 3 does give the 5600H a pretty noticeable advantage here. Though it isn't an earth shattering difference, it is at least going to mean that you're going to get an overall better experience, especially in multi-threaded applications with the 5600H. But even the increase in the single core score lets you know that overall, it's just going to be a faster experience. So the first game we're going to be taking a look at is is grid 2 here it's running with the high in-game graphics settings and as you can see here on the ryzen 5 5500u we do get some very decent levels of performance you really wouldn't have anything to complain about but of course the 5600h does actually give us a pretty nice boost in performance here and overall it's a nicer experience and it does give you the headroom that you could turn this up to ultra if you wanted to but really the biggest benefit is that if you have a high refresh rate display you can actually utilize it and get a decent Decent amount of a benefit from it but of course grid 2 is a much older game taking a look at hitman 3 here you can see the built-in benchmark running and there is a noticeable gap in terms of performance between the two but the biggest uplift here is in those one percent lows just because of the fact that those one percent lows are a lot closer to those averages that means that we have a far more consistent experience with the 5600h though neither of them is dramatically impressive and we're not using fsr here due to the fact that fsr 2.0 does impact performance now we can take a look at mountain blade 2 banner lord you're running with the lowest in-game graphics setting and the built-in benchmark here shows us the performance difference it's really not that wide the improvements in the one percent lows are nice but our fps average isn't hitting 60 yet though the closer we get to it the better so overall there is an improvement with the 5600h but it's not a drastic one by any means here and of course here we have borderlands 3 running with the built-in benchmark and again the thing that we're going to see that is the most consistent is the uplifts that we see in the one percent lows the averages a lot of the time don't see massive increases unless it's very specific titles but in general it's the improvements in those one percent lows that makes the overall experience better and it does push titles that are kind of in the border of playability into more than playable territory. Rise of the Tomb Raider is kind of an older title at this point, but it's still extremely demanding to run on these specific systems. And in general, while we do see an uplift in the averages, the 1% lows didn't really see any improvement at all, which means that the overall experience is equally bad, really, on both of them. The next title we're taking a look at is one that I like to rag on for being just relegated to just being a benchmark, but it is Strange Brigade 
right here running with the lowest in-game graphics settings with DirectX 12. And as you can see, again, the usual trend of a slight improvement in averages, but the biggest benefit always being the improvements in 1% lows. In general, both are going to provide you a decent enough experience, but the uplift that we see with the 5600H is welcome. Now, Ghost Recon Wildlands is another title that is quite a few years old now, but still remains extremely heavy. And what that means is that neither system is really able to provide a decent enough experience to make this worthwhile. If you're going to want to play this game, you're going to have to drop the resolution. 1080p is just going to be completely out of the question on both of them. And in general, you should not expect any major increases in terms of your FPS. You could certainly get it to be very playable at 720p, but that is a big sacrifice. Now, a title that does see quite a bit of an uplift is Rainbow Six Siege, and this is to be expected here. The game itself really enjoys itself some CPU clock speed increases, and you'll see throughout this benchmark that the 5600H, thanks to its higher TDP, is able to maintain higher clock speeds more consistently. So while both systems have the exact same iGPU running at the exact same clock speed, it's those improvements to those CPU clock speeds that actually end up making the difference here. Now, the next thing we're looking at is Mafia 2 Definitive Edition running in the lowest in-game graphics settings. And you'll see that there is a difference in terms of performance, though not very drastic, and the FPS is already at a range where it should be comfortably enjoyable. The increase is, of course, welcome, but it isn't going to make it any drastically better to play or anything like that. So an overall improvement, and again, thanks to the, those more consistently higher CPU clock speeds, but not a earth-shattering change whatsoever and of course a usual favorite to benchmark is batman arkham knight another title that is quite a few years old at this point it's still relatively heavy to run but you can see here that the biggest benefit for the 5600h here is that it gives us a nice enough boost in the fps average and those one percent lows to keep everything above 30 at this point this is about the most ideal spot though i would not blame you if you wanted to drop your resolution down to 900p on either one of these systems now a title that that always seems to run on practically anything is alien isolation here you can see it running with the ultra in-game graphics setting and on both systems you get some pretty incredible levels of performance the game seems to be just so well optimized that it doesn't even really get much of an improvement from the higher tdp of the 5600h in general i am always blown away by what systems can actually play this game and of course what this really shows is that these types of systems really thrive on being able to play these older AAA titles. As you can see here, both systems are providing a pretty much 60 FPS average, and the increases aren't really that drastic, at least in this game. But in general, the fact that we're actually able to play Tomb Raider at the high in-game graphics settings is a pretty welcome sight, and especially knowing that we're not really sacrificing anything in terms of performance. Of course, the next title we're taking a look at is Metro Last Light, another favorite of mine. You can see here that there are some improvements in your FPS average, but again, the big winner here is those 1% lows getting boosted far closer to 40. It's just going to mean an overall smoother experience. Really, any kind of gains that you can get in your 1% lows are going to be far more meaningful in terms of keeping a more consistently smooth experience. And that really just seems to be the entire key of the 5600H. Those higher CPU blue boost clocks are about the only major benefit that it has, besides the also increase in cache size. But what that means is that the overall improved CPU performance is what's actually giving us a nice uplift that can push a lot of titles into being at 60 FPS or just under it. And in some titles that will make a pretty drastic difference, but in a lot of others, it really won't. As you can see here with Bioshock Infinite running with the very high graphics preset, we're not really getting much of an improvement whatsoever between the two systems. So these higher TDPs and higher clock speeds don't necessarily improve much in a lot of titles, but in others, you will see some improvements and all it really Really is is just pushing the specific hardware that we already have towards its theoretical limit of course there will always be those titles that do see a big benefit from improvements in cpu performance as you could see here with sleeping dogs the improvements in the cpu do make a really massive improvement in terms of your fps
FPS average and 1% lows, that you could realistically actually turn up the graphics settings away from medium if you wanted to. But that's not always going to be the case. And in a lot of cases, it's not going to be like that. I would say probably the vast majority of games. So unless you're really looking to play older AAA titles or really low end esports titles, you're not really going to be seeing much of a benefit really between the Ryzen 5 5500U and the 5600H. But a lot of the times it is just welcome improvements in consistency. And with a lot of APU systems, you're already a lot of the times gaming at a borderline experience where if things were just slightly worse, it would just completely ruin everything. But what this does is really boost things to the point where you have a little bit of wiggle room there. You have a little bit of headroom now for really intense scenes to not suddenly bring everything down. Overall, I think that as I've been testing all of these different systems, what I'm finding out to be the most common thing is that TDP matters more than anything else. Because when a system has a higher TDP, it pretty much just has enough headroom that it can perform at a much higher level than anything else. And it's an interesting though unsurprising revelation, but it is unfortunate because of the fact that manufacturers really seem to obfuscate this information. They don't exactly make it easy to find out what the TDP of a system is. You pretty much need to get it in your hands. And a lot of the times, by the time you get to that point, it's already too late. Now, in this situation, the 5500U actually isn't that far behind, specifically because 25 watts is enough to get most of the performance. But there is still a little bit that is missing off the top. And that plus the increased IPC of Zen 3 over Zen 2 pretty much means that the 5600H is a no surprise winner here, though it does show that it isn't a monument monumental leap. The big leaps didn't really come until the 6000 series came and brought in a substantially better iGPU. But I'll catch you guys in the next one.